The scripture reading for this morning is Psalms chapter 2, verse 7 through 12. I will declare the decree the Lord had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen. Oh, wait, never mind. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee under heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed. Ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When this wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. out this morning. Uh, I kind of <clears throat> want you to look at that last verse of that scripture reading. But before we get to that, <clears throat> you have to bear with me because in my madness, I got up at 6.30 this morning and changed my whole sermon. So uh, hopefully, and my notes here aren't the same as the notes you're going to see on the PowerPoint. So uh, just something hit me this morning that Part of it, what I was going to speak on, I thought was not the, the appropriate time to do it. I think it needs to be done at a later time. That's my madness, so uh, excuse me for that. But <clears throat> this last part of this verse, and many of you know and remember Brother Don McCarty. He preached a sermon on Kiss the Sun years and years ago. And when we were studying on Wednesday night, we came across, across this verse here. In Psalms, the second chapter. And that, for some reason, like I said, my madness, popped, he, he popped in my head, kissed the sun. He wrote that lesson. Uh, I'm not going to go the route he went. I'm going to go a different route. But uh, it's funny how you run, run across verses and things like that pop in your mind from nowhere. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a very importance in that. If you look at that, verse, it says, lest he be angry. Kiss the son. In other words, as we'll get into it a little bit here, do homage to him. Do homage to the king. As you would think about a king in latter days uh, <clears throat> under Israel or any other nation, how they treated the king. They would bow down before the king. They would not enter, the king Esther would not enter in to see the king unless she was asked to or was made known to him. And he said, come on in. You couldn't just walk in and say, hey, here I am. Uh, So that type of respect, that type of reverence. And what I want to get at today, and if you look in your Bible, some of you have a little star or something. This is a messianic prophecy. And talking about Christ. And we know that Christ is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. And he is our king. And we are in the kingdom of, of his kingdom. And we bow down to him and we worship him. So... I want to get into that today and see, I think a lot of times we get caught up in worldly things and we forget that we are in a kingdom and that the things of the world doesn't really mean anything. They do, but they don't. We can't let those things in the world come first in our lives, whether it be money, property, job, family, whatever it may be. Christ talked about it. He said, put me first. But sometimes we get caught up in the worldly things and we put money uh, respect and things like that first and forget about our king and we're not doing and not kissing the son doing homage to the son so what I want and, and I entitled this lesson <clears throat> kiss the son and uh, it's not like my son said see dad you gotta do that I said no we're not doing that 
And uh, <clears throat> so, but it's doing homage to the Christ, to the King, our Lord and Savior. And how do we do that? Well, the first thing I want to look at is we do it with obedience, obedience to his will. And that's when you're doing homage. You're obeying him. You love him. You keep his commandments. That's an obedience. That's the type of heart that he desires. And then we submit to his will. We submit to those commandments. We may say we obey him, but we actually act upon them. We submit to his will. As you would any king or any government says submit to them. You're submitting to the Lord Christ. And you're going to follow the things that he has set down for us to follow in his kingdom. And then we're going to put an allegiance. He's first. His kingdom is first. I don't worry about anything of this world. It's down on the list. We have God, family, and so forth. But those are first. And God is first. We kiss the sun. We do homage to the sun. And I want to get into a little bit here in uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, to kind of get us started on this little trail that I'm going to be going down. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. What's Paul saying? He said, give your bodies up as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice your bodies for, as we'll get into in a little bit, for your brethren, for the church. Sacrifice. Put everyone else before you. He says, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, don't take the things of this world. Uh, Sister Jody and I was talking about a few things a, a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> and we try to figure out why do people do this? Why do people do this? When it really doesn't matter. We get caught up in things that really don't matter. You see this day in and day out. And sometimes we ourselves get caught up in these things. But we need not to. We need to conform to the kingdom of Christ, not the kingdom of Satan. We need to be transformed out that kingdom into his kingdom and put him first. Then I'm going to give you a few examples of if we kiss the son, if we do good unto the brethren, we're doing good unto Christ. If we do good, do not do good unto the brethren, we're not doing good to Christ. We're not kissing the son. Let's look at these now. In Matthew, uh, the 25th chapter, in verses 34 through 40, this is talking about those that kiss the Son. In other words, those things that are being done that show that you are doing homage to the Christ. It says, then the king will say to those, and he's talking about the judgment, these things, then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Then the righteous will say, or will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them. Now listen to this verse, last part of this verse closely. Says, Truly I say, to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even least of them, you did it to me. So if you're doing good to the brethren, what are you doing good to? You're doing good to Christ. You're showing homage. You're kissing the son. You're showing your obedience. You're showing your allegiance and your submission to him. Now let's look at the part that those that don't kiss the son. In verse 41 through 46, it says, then, I'll, then he will say also to those on the left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. 
Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison you did not visit me. And this, is the, this, is, this is their answer now. Then they, they themselves will also answer, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer it, them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, and, but the righteous into eternal life. So if you don't take care of the brethren, if you don't, as we'll go through some of the things that you don't do, you're not kissing the sun. You're not doing submission to Christ. You're not doing obedience to Christ. You're not giving your allegiance to him and his kingdom. And that's what I'm going to deal with today. Actions of Christians to Christians. <clears throat> the first one we'll look at is forsake the daily, first day of the week. Well, you think, well, how, how can that be? What, what, what would that be causing problem with? Well, let's look at the, what uh, we see, and everybody's familiar with this because we have been taught from the time we were little these verses. But I think we, we just look at verse 25 and forget about the verses previous to that, before that. Let's look at those verses. It says, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our body, bodies washed with pure water. Now listen to this. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stimulate one another and to love one and give and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembly together, as the, as the habit of some is, but encouraging one another all the more you, as you see the day drawing near. Well, how can we say, that's a good thing, right? But if you forsake the assembly, are you going to edify me? Am I going to edify you? Are you going to stimulate me? Or am I going to stimulate you if you're not here? How do we do that? So we're not taking the proper actions that the king wants us to take. We're not kissing the sun. We're not doing homage to the sun. We're not obeying. We're not submitting, and we're not giving allegiance to him. Because we're not here to gather together to stimulate, edify one another. We need to do that because how does that make us strong? How does that make us stand against the world? You know, you talk about how am I going to be stronger if I go by myself? In the military, if you send one guy out against an army of 10,000, he's going to survive? No, he's not going to survive. Just take, now take it for instance with us. If I'm not stimulated, if I'm not edified, if I'm not encouraged, I'm sent out to the world by myself. Am I going to survive? Probably not. But if I have fellow brethren encouraging me, edifying me, stimulating me, it's going to help me. And we'll see that as we go on. And then we don't teach one another. For, and let's look at that. We have to be together to teach one another, correct? Well, look at this. In Colossians, which is one we use about instrumental music, but we can lose it for teaching. If we're not here, we can't teach one another. It says, let the word of Christ dwell, richly dwell within you with all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. If I'm not here, are you teaching me? Are you admonishing me? I don't think so. I have to be here, right? And you have to be here so we can all do it together. He says, admonishing one another with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. To me, it's a no-brainer. If you're not here, then you're not helping me, and I'm not helping you. So we're not teaching one another. And we should be teaching one another. That should be our desire. And what does that do for us? We kiss the sun. We do obedience. We do submission. We're alleg our allegiance is towards him. Let's look at something else. And these things here is things that the world has no 
use for as you look at it. They could care less. They could ask you. They could do like some have asked me and probably some have asked you. Why do you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? I said, I told him, I said, because I'm encouraged to be able to get through the week with that encouragement. I need that encouragement. Because if not, I'll be just like everybody else. I'll just float away. Be like a ghost here, then gone. But look, let's look at the, another one. When we don't help the saints. When we don't help the needy saints. Let's look at that <clears throat> for a moment. In 1 John, and also in James, we see this. It says, we know love by this. He says, we know love. Remember? We know love. That he laid his life down for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for the brethren. But whosoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Okay, also in James, what use is it, my brethren? If one says he has faith but no works, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister without clothing and in need of daily food, and no one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed, and be filled, yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, if faith has no works, it's dead, but being by itself. So once again, how are we kissing the sun? We see a needy saint, needs something, we take care of them. We don't say, hey, I'll be praying for you. Hopefully you get better, or hopefully you get what you need. When you have it right there in your back pocket, or if you have, if it's not necessary money, or if it's food, or if it's clothing, or anything, or a place to stay. So, if we don't do that, are we doing homage to Christ? No, we're not. All these things I'm going through today are no-brainers. But sometimes we get caught up in the world and we need to be reminded. And that's what Peter told him. He said, I'm writing this letter to, to remind you of those things. And that's what we do for each other when we come together. We remind each other of these things. We study these things so that we can remember them. And keep them in our forefront of our thoughts. And then here's another one that's kind of hard, but it may, but it needs to be done. But sometimes we don't do it. No effort in restoring a fellow Christian. One that has gone astray. Do we call them? Do we sit, check on them? Say, hey, you were not here this morning. Or you're not here tonight. Which was their common practice of being here. But then it's, you miss one week. The next week, if you miss it, then it gets easier and easier and easier. But we, as Christians, as fellow heirs, need to be supportive of them and check on them. Do we do all the time? No. I fail miserably. I try to text people that aren't here, but I fail miserably. So that's my fault, and I need to work on that. I need to get better at that. But we all do. Now look at this in uh, Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse one and two. Think about this. Now put this into context of restoring a fellow Christian. It says, brethren, if anyone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one looking to himself, so that you will, you too will be not tempted. Bear one another's burdens. Therefore, fulfill the law of Christ. If we don't do that, are we doing homage to Christ? See, these things are things that we need to be doing, but sometimes we get slackness or we get lackadaisical. We just don't do that, and we need to. If we see a brother in trespass, we need to try to restore them. Those that are spiritual, that's your responsibility, to help that weak brother or sister. Because why? They're, we're all in this together. We're fellow heirs. We need to continue to work that way. Then The next verse I want to look at is... Do we bear one another's burdens? If we don't, then are we doing homage? Are we kissing the sun? Look in Romans, the 15th chapter. We just finished that in our morning class. It says, Now we who are strong ought to bear the weakness of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Each one of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to his edification. Even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, 
the reproaches of those who reproach fell on me. Christ took on the sin of the world. He bore that. He became sin to take away sin through his blood, through his death on the cross. But he says, those that are strong, if you're not bearing the weaknesses of the brethren, are you doing homage to Christ? Are you kissing the Son? Are you obeying him? Are you submitting to him? Is your allegiance to him in his kingdom? If you don't do that, no, it's not. But our allegiance to him is we bear the burdens of our fellow brethren, whatever it may be. Then I want to look at now some actions that kiss the sun. In other words, what am I doing to kiss the sun? What am I doing to do homage to my king? The first thing we can do is we can turn one back from sin. In other words, we can say, hey, take him to the side. Say, are you having problems with this? I noticed that you're, this is going on and going. Do you need help with this? Well, in the book of James, he tells us something that we can do and what, what happens when we do do that. He says, my brethren, if any among you strays from the truth and one turns him back, if one goes against the truth, goes off into the world, but he says, and one turns him back. If that fellow Christian, that strong one, turns him back, then what he, let him said, let him know that he turns a sinner from the error of his way, will save his soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins. So if we go to our brother or sister and when they're in erring and say, hey, can we talk about this? But you've got to go to them in the right manner. Hey, you're wrong. I need to tell you why you're wrong. No, that's not quite the way to do. Years ago, it would have worked, but now too many people wear the feelings right here. And you can't do that. You have to, like Paul said, you got to check your, your manner of speech and see how you are to speak. Salt with a little salt. Also, we need to have a fervent love for the brethren. That is what a Christian is doing. If he has fervent love for the brethren, then what? He's doing homage to the king. Because why did Christ come to the world? To seek and save the lost. What is our responsibility? To seek and save the lost. First Peter, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 10. The end of all things is near. Therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each has received a special gift, employ in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Wow, there's so much information in that. That's a sermon right there. There's like five points in it. He says to be sound in spirit. If you're in sound in spirit, what are you going to do? He said, for the purpose of prayer. In other words, you know that prayer works. And you know that you need to do it like Daniel. Three times a day, if not more. But he says, above all, above all things, keep fervent in your love for the brethren. What does that fervent in love mean? My fellow brethren is first. I give them everything if they need it. I don't worry about, oh, they don't respect me. Or, oh, they're not giving me what's due to me. That's not, that's the way of the world. That's selfishness. And, it's, and also, he says on, he says, he said, because Why? Why do you have it for love? He says, it covers a multitude of sins. Because you're going to submit and kiss the son. And you're going to obey. What does he tell you to do? Take care of the weak. Turn back the erring one. And he says, be hospitable without complaint. Don't expect them to, if you, if, say, if I invite you over supper tomorrow night. Don't, I shouldn't be sitting here, well, I hope they do it to me next week. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, do good without thinking about anything or wanting anything back for it. 
Put them first. And we'll get into that in a couple minutes. And he goes on, he says, if you received a gift, he's talking about sometimes here as our, the spiritual gifts, but also if you think down today, we that have gifts, and everyone has a gift. I don't care. You might say, no, I don't. You're lying to yourself because you do have a gift. God gave everybody at least one gift. So what are you going to do with that one gift? You're going to help edify. You're going to help strengthen. You're going to be employed as a good steward in the kingdom. You're going to be a good little soldier. You're going to obey the king. You're going to do what he asks. And it's like some people say, I'm here, neck down, nothing else. But I'm doing everything I can for the Lord and his kingdom. Then the next, next one we'll look at is not selfishness. And this will be towards the end of the lesson. It says, don't be selfish. We always teach our kids that thing, you know. But somewhere between 5 years old and 18 years old, maybe, maybe a little later, we forget that. We become selfish. It's mine. I deserve this. We forget what our mothers taught us. What the Lord taught us, said, do unto those as you would have them do unto you. Mom taught me that years and years. But sometimes you got you get become into adulthood, you forget that. I deserve this because I did this, 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 this. No, you don't deserve nothing, really. We don't deserve anything. But Christ gave us so that we do have life. That's being selfish when you say, I deserve this. Let's look over in Philippians, the second chapter. This chapter here, we should read daily because we forget daily the things of this chapter. Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, United in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interests of others. And I'm not going to bring up the next verse, because I want the next, in verse 5, I want you to look, I want you to turn there in Philippians, the second chapter, verse 5, and we'll begin reading here in a minute. But I want to look at these. He says, if there's any encouragement in Christ, and he goes on about love, fellowship, affection, compassion, uh, unity, intent on one purpose, not being selfish from empty conceit. But he said, with one mind, look on others as more important than yourself. Do not be selfish. And I keep going back to that because I hear it every day. And it's in the work field, and I've even heard it from Christians. I deserve that. That's owed to me. And it just, it just drives me nuts, basically. I'm sorry. Uh, because you get what you work for. It's not a free, free money like our government thinks it is. But it's, you have to work to get respect. Because I have young men say, well, he don't respect me. And I tell him, I said, you have to earn that respect. It isn't given freely. There's something behind it. You've got to put a little effort behind it. But it's me. This is what I call it, and I think it's what the world calls the me world. It's all about me. I'm first. Take care of me first. And you hear that all the time. I need to make sure my career is first. Then I'll worry about God and family. But I have to take care of that first. Or my finances are first, so I'll take care of God and family after that. But anyway, I want you to turn to Philippians, the second chapter, verse 5. And here is the attitude that all Christians should have. All those that kiss the sun. I don't have it up there because I didn't copy it down. I want you to read it. Have this attitude as a member of the kingdom. And verse 5 begins, Have this attitude in yourself, which is also in Christ Jesus, 
Well, hey, if he has this type of attitude, I need to have that kind of attitude, right? That's the kind of attitude I need to have. Because I want to be just like him. I want to follow in his footprints. I want to follow his examples. Verse 6 says, Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant, and being made in the likeness of man, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by obedience to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason, God also highly exalted him and bestowed him the name which is above every name. We'll stop right there. What type of attitude did Christ have? He gave his life. Let that sink in a minute. Are you willing to give your life? Are we giving our life to the king? Are we kissing the sun with our life, our actions towards one another? Are we doing that? You have to ask yourself that. You have to test yourself. You have to examine yourself and see that you're doing those things. But the last verse I'm going to read here, and then a couple points in the lesson's yours. In verse 10 it says, So that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. What are we going to do to the king? We're going to kiss the son. We're going to bow every knee to Christ. In other words, we're going to obey him, submit to him, and have allegiance to him and his kingdom. They are first in our lives. So this morning, in conclusion, I want us to look at, think about some things, not look, but think at some things. Think about our heart. Look into your heart. After what we went through this morning, are we kissing the sun? We need to ask ourselves, are we doing homage to Christ? And once again, these three words you'll have, sure have remembered by the, end of the, by the end of this lesson. Obedience, submission, allegiance to the king. Am I doing that? Am I in that point? And I want to say this, in our actions towards one another, are we doing that? Are we putting my fellow brother, my fellow sister, before myself? Or am I saying, no, I need this first, and then I'll take care of them? Jesus said, one that is plowing, and he turns around, he's not worthy of the kingdom. So this morning, ask yourselves, am I kissing the sun? And if you're subject to invitation, won't you come as we stand and sing?